Hello, we are live. <laughs> I know I had to take a drink of water right when you started. I yeah, couldn't wait. I, said, I even said I'm clicking go live. Yeah. Go, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I had to take a drink. What can I say? I'm a thirsty guy. Well, hello. Welcome. Welcome, everyone, to uh, another Sunday reading sprint. I'm very excited. Sorry if you can hear this. I've been fidgeting with this. Your mom got this for you and it's turned into my fidget. Yeah. I left my fidget downstairs when we go to We'll sprint. have to get oh. it on the next reading sprint. That's what I was going to say. What but, is everyone reading? Oh, uh, what were you going to say? Me? Yeah, you were about to say something. Just that I have to go get it. It's twice, two times in a row now that we've started sprints and I don't have my fidgeter. And so I'll have to I was reminded and... you to go get it, but then I forgot about it myself. I so. was playing with my AirPods. I was just tapping, tapping it on the desk and just spinning it in my hand. And so when you don't got a fidget toy around, you make fidget toys, you know? Yeah. And yeah. So... What are you, what are you reading? I know it says it right there, but you can tell the us. Fragile you... Threads of Power, the new yes. the, the Schwab book. So you I... finished the third one just Taunting of light yeah last week mm, yeah i would say it was last week at some point i'm pretty sure cuz i think on monday i started fragile threads and so um yeah it was good i enjoyed uh, i mean i i think we said it before but i read the first darker shade of magic but i didn't read the other two and so <laughs> it was nice to actually like finish the series and see where that story went yeah. And uh so I know that people have said that you have to read the first series to read Fragile Threads, which is why we did the I did the reread, you did the reread read and new. <laughs> um do you agree with that statement just like from what you've started reading? Yeah. I mean the there are characters that are in the first trilogy that are in this series or in this book at least. And so Okay. Um I guess from what I have what I've read so far. Um, oh my gosh, I can't believe. Hold on, sorry. I'm reading a comment. I forgot you can't see. It's okay. Well, thank you for joining us. I can't believe you're up. You're amazing for being up at wow. midnight. I <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> uh, no, at midnight, we are asleep every night, even on yeah. New Year's. Yeah. If we set an alarm. He wakes me up. I, we go, yay, and then I fall back to sleep. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. But thank you for joining us. But nothing Exciting. like, you know, midnight sprints. That's what I say. That would help me fall asleep if I was awake at midnight, you know, like <laughs> reading a little bit to fall asleep. I mean, it happened last night, but not at midnight. I did, just that... I did this like eating, not <laughs> reading, but. <laughs> oh. um, you were reading. You read for a good long while. Oh, I'm, I wasn't thinking of last night. I was thinking of the night before. Um, so Friday night, you went to bed at like 830 because you were reading and you just got tired. Mm hmm. And so it's I'm telling you, they've said read to go to bed. And yeah, yeah, it's not wrong. Um, But anyway, I don't know for Fragile Threads. I don't think I've read anything in that book yet. That is like a part of the story of the first trilogy. And so outside of like characters being present, I don't there's not like plot or mm, I guess there is some stuff that happened, but like they kind of explain it again somewhat. So. Okay. I think I think it's helpful to know or to read the tr first trilogy just so that you can have like an understanding of the characters and then some of like their mindset and what's going on in them, that kind of thing. Okay. Um. What was I gonna say? Um. I am gonna be reading Lightfall, a lethal graphic novel. Nice. That is looks really cute. It's part of the series. Yeah. Oh, is it a series? Yeah. Nice. It is. Um, I just thought of for a second that I should make sure that it. Well, I was gonna say I should make sure it's live, but we had someone join, so <laughs> <laughs> clearly we're live. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's a graphic novel. Um, it's a fantasy. I don't know too much. I think they have to just save the day, and aren't they just like the most adorable thing you ever seen? <laughs> um so i'm very excited about that looks like there's a kitty as well you couldn't see very good but like there's a little cat down there mm, yeah so 
Very excited. Speaking of cats, I might get one. That's trying to get on my desk right now. <laughs> Is it Pippi? Oh, hello. <laughs> Thanks for Pippi. joining us, Pips. Yeah. <laughs> He's been what in... are you going to be reading, sir? I'm going to be reading the top of dad's head. <laughs> That's what I'm reading. He's going to come back now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you, Pips. He's been really enjoying. <laughs> Don't the... show your butt to the camera. <laughs> He's been really enjoying coming up and giving me head rubs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and so he says, Dad, I know that we already hung out this morning, but I have to join you now. You can sit if you want. Oh, thank you. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Oh, I'll just have to do a cuddle. Oh, my gosh. Right He's so cute. I know I see him every day all day, but I love him so much. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Pippi. Oh, yeah. Touch that. <laughs> That's good. He wants to talk. Yeah, you want me to bring it closer for you? Here, you want to talk into it? I'll bring it down to you. What do you want to tell the world? Do you want to tell them anything? No? He's gotten shy now. Oh, but he still wants to touch it. Oh, closer to that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. That's what. Who's the real audio engineer here? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so, Pippi, um, I'm, this is upside down. I'm reading. <laughs> Also, A Fellowship of Baker's Magic by Jay Penner. It's a self-published book, and it's supposed to be Great British Bake Off meets Lord of the Rings. Ooh, that's oh. right up your alley. Yeah, I got it from your sister for Christmas. Oh, nice. And uh, I'm going to be reading it for this little read-a-thon vlog I'm doing. So I've got two things here. I think I'm going to start with Lightfall, and then I'm going to go to this one. Okay. Nice. That's a good, good goal. I think. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. <laughs> I know. Isn't it cute? Uh -huh. Um, I'll be listening to Fragile Threads because that's where how I started with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I. You also really like the audiobook narrators. I do like the audiobook narrators. They are my favorite narrators. But I've got the iPad with me too, and so I might bust it out and do some more thinking, planning, scheming on video game stuff. Mm. And so okay. we'll see. <laughs> I'm just looking at his <laughs> camera. His tail's thwacking. Uh oh. I had to uh, raise the desk up for this so that the mm -hmm. camera was at a good height. Um, and so <laughs> he had to stretch a little bit further than normal to get up on the desk. And he's got a little bit more room underneath the desk. And so... <laughs> He's got paws up. Ooh, what are you doing? Where are you going? So for reading sprints, <laughs> we're going to do 30-minute sprints. Okay. And um, we'll do like a 10-minute break or something in between. Sure. Um, I don't know how many we're going to do because I, uh, I'm not feeling the best. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Pip says he'll take care of the show for today. Yeah, I mean, who needs me when you got Pippi? <laughs> As you were saying. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we'll do 30 minute sprints and then we'll break and uh, talk for a little bit, but it probably won't be the longest sprints today. We'll have to see how I feel. Sounds good. Um, talk about your playlist, though. Oh, yeah. For those that are interested. Oh, yeah, get the on one. out. <laughs> I know. As always, there are um, reading sprints uh, linked below. No, what am I talking about? There are playlists linked below. One is a uh, instrumental and another is with like so uh, lyrics to it. So you're welcome to listen along. I will be listening to the one with... Um, lyrics so that's linked below i will listen to the one with the instrumental how are you going to do that and listen to the audiobook uh, i'm going to put my airpods in underneath my headphones you're gonna you could do both of those noises at the same time yeah i'll just turn the music down low okay i mean i picked the that's why wow. i need to do the instrumental listen for my job you take on you got to focus on a lot of things at once and so Sometimes you get really good at tuning stuff out. Yeah, I guess so. I'm focusing on oh stuff my gosh, okay. other things. Yeah, I need you, to drink my tea. You do. 
get up, do a couple like, you know, jogs around the house, that kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So we'll see. I guess let's just start the first sprint. Okay. Um, and then we'll be back in thirty minutes because I feel like thirty minutes is a good amount. I changed it up this time. We've got a little cafe feeling. It's a nice, no? like a Japanese corner store kind of vibe. It said it was called Aesthetic Cafeteria. I'm getting that. Mm -hmm. I'm getting that vibe. Yeah. So let's do that. And um, we'll come back here in 30 minutes and talk. Hello, Shari. Welcome. Hope you have is a good time. It, is it Sherry? Uh, I don't know. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway we're gonna go we're gonna read for 30 minutes and come back and then everyone can tell us what they're reading okay goodbye <laughs>
We're back. Hello. Oh, you sound very far away. That's... <laughs> I, I was. You sound very much in front of your microphone now. <laughs> I didn't even realize um, I wasn't in front of you. I'm almost done with this. Oh my gosh, is this the cutest thing I've read in a while? Yeah. I mean, I just read Bug Boys and that was pretty darn cute. So I can't really say it that much of a while, but like it's yeah. this is adorable. It's so cute. Good. It's wow. making me giggle and just it's beautiful. Um like artwork. What do you call it? Yeah. Like I'm oh yeah. Curious. Wow. Very pretty. It's hard Very colorful it. and yeah. Everything like that. And the little she meets up with this guy and he's like an ancient warrior. Mm -hmm. He's just so, so stinking cute. <laughs> They're like so fun together. She's um, got like anxiety and uh -huh. it's like cool how it's being like portrayed in here. Mm -hmm. And he's like very much just like, oh, whatever. Let's just go into danger. Like <laughs> it'll be fine. What, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> LOL. And she's like, oh, here's all the worst that can happen. Yeah. So it's a fun dynamic. Nice. And it's cute because it's like getting her like a little more like, comfortable like with adventure and then he has his own little story arc yeah cute well good i'm glad you're enjoying it how about you uh, i got probably about 15 pages in so i slowed down the book so normally i read at one and a half speed mm -hmm. i slowed it down to one by because i didn't want to like in my distraction of doing other things not pay attention and i was afraid if it was going too fast it would have been too much and yeah i would like to agree with myself that that was a good idea but it just makes you forget how slow people have to read when they record audiobooks and it's something that yeah. like i've dealt with when i record them myself with people mm -hmm. is that when we record them like if i were to sit and read a book i can read about a page a minute i think that's like pretty average for people is about a page a minute mm -hmm. um but when you have to physically read it out loud that drops to like half a page a minute just because you have yeah. to read a little bit slow or add the pauses, breaths, and whatnot. And so... Yeah, and you probably want it at a pace that, like, maybe the most people can understand. Because, like, I can talk fast, but I wouldn't necessarily want that in an audiobook because not everyone yeah. can understand that speed of talking. Yeah. A lot of times, too, you know, when you and I are talking off the cuff, I'm not having to physically read what I'm about to say. Yeah. And so... Yeah, reading it makes you slow down anyways. Yeah. And a lot of times, too, it's not like... It's not like a script where you've like poured over line after line after line like a couple times to make sure you've got yeah. it. You know, it's like your first, maybe second read, usually mm -hmm. first. And so it just goes slower. And so, yeah, I was sitting and looking and I was like, man, I only got like 15 pages in that half an hour. What the heck? But it's like, well, duh, Noah, like everything has to be slowing down. Yeah. So. Um. Shari, because it's a long A, Shari uh -huh. is reading Hawk Song by Amelia Atwater Rhodes, a Christmas present. That's cool. I've never heard of it. Let me look it up. Have you read something by that author before? No. I'm that... Olivia Atwater is the one I was just talking to you about. Ah, uh, that must be why. I was like, I feel like I know that name. That would be why. It looks like it's a, fan a young adult fantasy romance mm -hmm. with a shapeshifter. That's cool. I hope you like it. I hope you're enjoying it. It looks Sorry. like, uh, yeah, I was going to say it looked a little older just based on the cover. Here, let me um share this screen instead. Yeah, I was looking at, uh, I was texting my sister too, because we're still talking about the um, Black Prison series. And so. so this is it. Nice. But it's 2003. I was going to say from the cover, you can tell it's like an older book. Yeah. Well, cool. Only nine pages in. Understandable. Hope you end up liking it. It's giving me, just reading from the description a little bit too. Um, mm -hmm. Was it Animorphs? Is that the... The cover feels a little Animorphs-like. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's called Animorphs. It was called like... Yeah, what was it called? I'll Google over here too. Um, no, it was called... Goosebumps? No, it was Animorphs. A N I M O R P H S. 
these ones. Uh, they, like turn so. into something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it the cover was a little bit giving that. Well, reading the description a little bit too, it like I never read those books, to be fair. I don't know what those books are actually about, but reading the description, it they're sh a avian shapeshifter. And yeah, but so. this I think those were more like something happened and then they got turned into that. Got I think it. this is more just like this world there are shapeshifters. Yeah. And that's like a normal thing. I dig it. I mean, Granted, we both haven't read it, so <laughs> let's just guessing. keep speculating. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm down for I'm down for that kind of stuff. I mean, shoot. Um for Baldur's Gate 3, I played a druid in one of the campaigns that I was playing through. And shape shifting was like the best thing ever. For D D, mm -hmm. I thought about creating a druid just to shape shift. I think shape shifting is a really cool mm -hmm. like character uh dynamic that you get to play off of. And so I like shape shifting in um in books and stuff. That's always fun for me. I feel like I haven't read much that had shape shifting involved in it. They start as. No. Oh. oh, so they start off as a hawk and then they sh shape shift into. Ah, that's what it is. Maybe. Interesting. Yeah. That's an even cooler dynamic to play off of. There's just so many books out there. It's like, it's crazy how many, like, you just never have heard of. And every time, like, that's why I love, like, book two. It's like, I feel like everyone tells me a book and, like, there's so many I just never heard of that I get yeah. exposed to. I just think that that I think it's so cool just how creative people are. Like I wouldn't have thought of that idea at all, right? When you think mm -hmm. shapeshifting, I think human to to animal every time. Wouldn't have thought about going animal to human. Mm -hmm. Totally different yeah. way to go about it completely. And so yeah, that's true. That's just cool. Things I don't think about. People that are more creative than me. Oh, I can take these out while we're on break. <laughs> I don't have to keep them in. I find it so funny uh, that you do that. You can't even tell they're in when my headphones are on, though, right? I know. You get away with it. Uh, gotta say, though, oh. your your instrumental playlist, 10 out of 10. The vibes yeah. definitely were set. Yeah. You liked it? Yeah. I'm I've got it playing in the background right now. Hi, the traitor. See, another one I haven't heard. Let's look it up. Have you heard of that author before? No. Uh, apparently, the best friend is a raven, and so... That's pretty cool too. Now, is it the best friend that's a raven? Are they a shapeshifter or is it just a, are they just a plain old raven? Because that that is also fun. It's a thriller, you said? Ooh, it's British. Yeah, a British spy goes undercover on a Russian oligarch super yacht. Mm. Ooh, so it's like an at sea kind of thriller. You I would like... be terrified. I like thrillers that are at looks similar to that. I like the covert operation, like military operation or like M MI6 or whatever mm -hmm. kind of books. And so I feel like jam. I found that I like it more as a movie than I like it as books. Hmm. Cause I think I like in movies, like you have an hour of it and then you're done where I sometimes feel like reading it, um, makes the enjoyment go down because I I'm with it for longer than I want to be. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, that's cool. That's what you were saying is her best friend. Yeah. Is a yeah. Sorry. I, I had moved on <laughs> to other comments Sorry. while you were looking up the book. It's okay. Sorry. But that's, that's cool. I love having like, this isn't necessarily animal companion. Cause like she obviously mm -hmm. it's a little different than that, but like, I love that kind of stuff in it yeah like in this we've got different kind of peoples but she also has her cat with her and her cat's just like getting into shenanigans they're like running from crabs and the cat's like i'm gonna touch it <laughs> <laughs> so Cute. i just love like i love any kind of like animal companion type stuff even adjacent things like that yeah you know yeah that That's is your jam great yeah. animals are just great anytime animals are involved it makes for better everything yeah i agree i agree 100 percent. Well, but um so you said you like reading thrillers like that 
you would because i haven't really seen you read very many of them um i have to be like in the right mood i used to one of the series that i loved when i was a kid um it's the alex Ryder series oh really i didn't know you loved that as a kid yeah yeah i read like all of them i'm pretty sure really not really all of them because more came out and i didn't follow up but yeah i mean at some point you like kind of grow up Oh. Yeah, I think I want to say that I read the first like eight to ten of them. And okay, all of those kind of follow a similar theme of just like kid spy working with the government yeah. that can get into, you know, places that the yeah. adults can't. And so I, I love stuff like that. I mean, I read I'm... in um in uh, middle school, which mm -hmm. I was too young to read it because there was some uh, some scenes in there that were for a mm -hmm. <laughs> little bit of an older audience. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like a meg cabot book where she saves the president's son and then she becomes like the president's bodyguard but she's like 16. <laughs> <And> <laughs> i loved it <laughs> i think that's exactly what would happen in real life you know yeah, oh you saved this person's like, life now you get to be their bodyguard forever well and that's of course fun. they have a romance between them between the president and the bodyguard no, oh, okay okay the bodyguard and the son got it oh so because they're it. both like 16. so she didn't become the president's bodyguard she became no. the president's son's bodyguard yeah got it okay yeah now i'm with it i've come full mm -hmm. i understand so i'm with you i liked stuff like that as a kid yeah uh what else did i read i feel like there were other books like that but i mean i like the james bond movies i think those are all really good and i like the um like the government you know whatever secret tech kind of side of it i don't have any books up here that I could reference off of. And so I guess Ender's Game kind of has a similar kind of vibe though, right? Like they are, technically it's like a military school, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. And so I love that. Um, I have to say my one claim to fame is that when I was in Italy mm -hmm. um, studying there, my sister was visiting us, us, me. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> they were filming the James Bond movie um that's right with specter or something that one um but where he drives the car on the river what year were you there 2016 2015 okay but he was driving the car and he was racing another car on the river in in, in rome yeah and we were literally there for them filming that like we could see everything and they like stopped because they filmed in the cafe that my sister and i like frequent in oh well, that's I cool frequented, and she was staying there while i was in class and uh they asked her to leave because they were going to film in there so she, you're right outside that that is very cool so Spe so that's like the coolest thing specter came out in 2015 so it was probably okay, so, that one yeah um, and it, it was really cool like i've never seen a film being set up mm -hmm. it was like really cool to see and they had like because it the way it works is like there's bridges and then you go obviously down and the river's down there it's not like you know right level with you yeah so they everyone was like standing on there like looking and watching yet in the movie you can't see it at all just keep them all out you know yeah because like i was like are, are they gonna make us all move because like we're all like crowding and they're about to film and they just they just film wow it's amazing yeah take all the people out that's cool don't, weren't yeah. you at Michigan State too when they filmed there? Or no? Yeah, uh, I was. Yeah, they filmed at the museum. Yeah. I was. I wasn't like around there. No, it was but you were like, at school at the time. I was at school, yeah. Um, and then they did um they did another one. Oh, my mom was in Detroit when they did the Transformers movie. That's right. Yeah, she was in like the two thousands, yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. she watched as they like filmed outside her window, destroying like buildings and stuff. <laughs> Casual. Like, yeah. Cause like it was a scene where they're like crushing things or whatever. Yeah. I think so. it was like one of the action sequences where they're like going through the city and. Yeah. You know, it was like one of those far away scenes, you know, where you mm -hmm. see like them like stomping through. It's yeah. Like that. Cool. Movie yeah. stuff, man. Movie magic. Mm -hmm. It's crazy what they can do like mm -hmm. with everything yeah um the timer is at eight seconds left <gasps> i, I know oh i paused goodness. it we're in um we're in indiana now but we both grew up in michigan so 
Midwestern yeah. Westerners Midwest. for life. Yes. Is it also freezing where you are? Because well, it's freezing. I and think, so does yeah, they usually more. they get more snow and stuff too. And so mm-hmm. I feel like every time it was like, oh, snowstorm coming in, right? Gr- at least growing up. Snowstorm coming in, like we're going to get dumped on with snow. It was like, here's the preview of what you're going to get. And they would show like Minnesota and they've got like uh-huh. feet of snow. And it was like, uh-huh. oh yeah, great. That's coming our way. And then we'd get like, you know, six inches, which is still a lot, but yeah. yeah. Well, you got more than my side. Cause I was like Detroit side of the state. Um, yeah. You would get the lake effect more than we did, but yeah. we did go up to the UP a couple of times. And like, that was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, how do you, how do you guys do it? I mean, I was still, Super, oh, that's good. Yeah, we got the cold wave that came through too recently, and so it's been cold yeah. this week. I mean, I woke up this we morning. A little bit of snow, though. We did. Yeah, I woke up this morning though, and it was negative two outside, and I was like, "Oh shoot!" I didn't realize it was going to get that low last night. But no, I'm not a fan. Um, as someone who doesn't retain any body heat, um, it's painful for me. <laughs> hey, it's 15 degrees do... outside right now. You know, it's warmed up a bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I. I know I texted you like this was the other day because I forgot to put socks on, which I also need to put them on. <laughs> oh, yep. They're purple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go grab socks real quick. Oh, thrown it to me just like that. Huh? Leave me high and dry. <laughs> That's fine. Um, It's been cold here and we've got a little bit of snow and I'm a, I'm a cold weather fan. Three degrees there. I was going fast, so I didn't get grab matching ones. <laughs> Even if you had the time, let's be honest, you wouldn't have grabbed matching ones. Or the chances that you grab matching ones would have been a little bit low. True. <laughs> uh, it's three degrees there. We're at 17 right now, so it's warmed up. Having the sun out yeah. definitely has helped warm up the day. We're supposed to get all the way up to 25 today. And so, Woo-hoo. yeah. I mean, the last couple days have been a little bit warmer. We had a few days where it was negative, but. So it's 25. Mm -hmm. Is that like negative five in Celsius? No. So their scale is a little bit different. And so um, I'll just look right now what temperature. uh, Well, let me do it this way. To me, Celsius, like. When you think about it, it makes more sense because, like, so, it's cold. It's zero, you know. Right now, it's seventeen, but in Celsius, it's negative eight. Yeah. See, like that makes more sense to me. What? <laughs> no, neither scale makes sense. Because, like, me. freezing. Like, if you think about yes. thirty-two degrees being freezing, to me, it makes sense for it to be zero. Totally, hundred percent on that side. Hundred percent zero degrees Celsius freezing. Hundred degrees boiling. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. But if you think about like the Fahrenheit scale, you've got like 180 degrees in there as the difference. And so it's almost like half the scale in that instance. But I don't know. Okay. I'd be down. I'd be down to convert to Celsius if everybody else converted to Celsius because. Yeah. I'm I'm also. That's the thing too. We're like the only ones who use Fahrenheit. So it's like, can we just, can we just be like everyone else? We have to be individuals. I guess we need to. We're special. You have to do everything different. Yeah. And not for any like good reason, you know, just like, yeah, <laughs> cause <laughs> why not? You know? Yeah. It's like, cause we don't want to, yeah. like, that's the main gist. Um, well, do you want to do another sprint now? Yep. I think it it's feels a good like time just to. stopped but I also have no sense of time. (laughs) Well, we just hit an hour. We've been live for an hour. And so it makes sense that we do another one, I think. Okay. Personally. I feel good about that. Um, Do we like the... um... The cafeteria? Yeah. Do we like this? Should I change it? I am down for this this vibe. I've been doing work. And so having, you know, like the cafeteria environment makes it feel like, oh, yeah. Works. Yeah, that's what kind of was I was going for was like you're sitting in a cafeteria reading or doing some work. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm fine to switch to centimeters. I think the metric mm-hmm. system is great. I don't use it, but if I had to switch to it, I'd be okay with it. Yeah. It just also makes it confusing to talk to anybody else outside of the U.S. It's like, 
And then we also use the time. Um, we don't use 24 hour time. Oh, see that one I'm okay with. I'm okay with staying on a 12 hour clock. I don't need to switch to the 24 hour clock. I mean, I think if I switch to the 24 hour clock, I'd be really confused because <laughs> I have especially... to go like, to, well, yeah, I have to like yeah. add it up, but it like also makes sense. Like you're sure. up 24 hours in the day. Yeah. Yep. I could so... switch if, if, if I had to switch, I could make the switch. I don't think it's that hard of a switch for me to do. I very much enjoy the fact that we use a 12 hour clock. Just for aesthetic reasons? Uh, I mean, it's just what I'm used to as well, yeah. you know? Like, if I had to switch to military time because I was in the military, that'd be fine. I can make the... Military happen. time's just the 24-hour clock, right? Yeah. yeah. I can make it work, but... Yeah, and the military uses it. So, like, half of... I mean, part of the U.S. is using it. <laughs> Why don't we just convert the whole thing? Scientists have to do everything in science units, which most of the time are metric, and so... Yeah. You know, we're just we're just trying to be complicated to be complicated, and that. Though I'm pretty I'm sure, I'm pretty sure the uh, the UK has their own set of weird things that they do. They use, you know, feet and meters and inches and whatever, and just trying to confuse everybody. Stones instead of pounds or kilograms. So we're not the only ones that are weird. Yeah. Well. All right. Well, I guess on that <laughs> note, let's start another uh, reading sprint or productivity sprint, whatever you're doing. Um, and we'll see you in 30 minutes.
Hello. Hello yet again. I finished um. my call. It's I'll okay. never remember that. <laughs> All right. That's what I'm here for. Um, I finished Lightfall. And then I... Um, Ooh, do this for me real quick. Back it up just a little bit, the microphone. It's just a little loud. I'll go. You finished Lightfall. And I, I started this. Um, got to page 10. Nice. Good job. Let I me tell I you. Saw. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. You tell me. No. You said let me tell um, you. So go ahead and tell me. I loved it. Good. Loved it with all my heart. Good. It was so cute. I think so. I think we're going to do another sprint. Um, okay. I feel up for it. Do you feel up for it? Sure. I can do another one. Yeah. I think we'll at least do one more. Okay. Um. But then this, I only got 10 pages in and I mm -hmm. had gotten to page four last night before I was like, I'm too tired because it's like 10 o'clock. Yeah. Um, so I really don't have any thoughts on this, but like, if you like middle grade graphic novels, this one is so cute. It's really, really, really cute. So highly nice. recommend. Very good. Well, I'm glad How you read you? it then. Um, book is going okay. I do think having having gotten a little bit further, though, I'm sure I'm only like 30 to 40 pages since where I was at the beginning of the sprints. Um, I do think reading the trilogy helps for context yeah. clues. Yeah. But you're still not feeling like amazing about it? No, just because I don't know that I don't see the direction yet. We're still like dealing with some of the like aftermath of the trilogy and the conclusion of the question do you mean my second book or do you mean probably what, your what second book about? mine yeah this one's called a fellowship of bakers and magic by jay penner it's a um self-published book and my sister-in-law found her on inst found them on instagram and uh sent me like some reels and stuff and we both agreed it looks super cute because it's supposed to be like great british bake-off meets lord of the rings and so my sister-in-law bought it for um, me for Christmas. So I've been really excited to get to it. Um, it's supposed to be like cozy fantasy. So you're gonna have to update your, your little card at the bottom to say what you're reading. Yeah, true, true. Let me do that. Now that you switched. Um, but yeah, for fragile threads, I just we're still dealing with the aftermath of everything that happened on the trilogy at the end of the trilogy. And so it's just like, I don't know what direction we're going. Yeah. Yeah. In the book. Well, and so you're not, like you said, you're not that far in. So no, and maybe I'm not, it'll pick up. I'm not upset about anything that goes on. That's been going on either. It looks like the book is about 650. It's just over 650. And so uh, I got yeah. a ways to go. I'm maybe 150. I do tops. feel like B Schwab kind of does start books a little slower. Like, mm -hmm. Typically, it's not that like the world building and stuff isn't um, like great or mm -hmm. like isn't in depth at the beginning because that I feel like is in depth and you get to know the characters. But like a lot of times, like you don't really get an idea of like where the plot's going until further in. Yeah. So there's the there's a pretty big time jump too between this book and the other books. And so, so far, it's kind of like filling in some of that time jump of like what happened and stuff too and so you're getting a little bit of the, the only complaint i have is that it's a little bit confusing at times about what where we're at in time because like one chapter will be you know in modern times though it does say at the start of the next chapter like four years ago or something like that it's just hard to keep track of i feel like um for me too i keep better track if i'm physically reading it and then i see the chapter and i'm like okay we're back here or it's like yeah. when I listen to it on audio, it like that, like goes over my head half the time. And then I'll be like, wait, what timeline are we in? Yeah. And so it probably is because I'm listening to it as a, an audio book that that's why I'm feeling lost too, somewhat. And so it's just like trying to keep track of it all, but I'm enjoying it so far. I, I'm glad to be back in the world and stuff. 
And then I'm just sit, sitting and planning stuff on here, which is fun. I'm in a creative Can mood. I? That's so, good. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask you about audiobooks because we kind of talked about it earlier and I was thinking mm -hmm. about it. And when you're recording someone who's like recording an audiobook, mm -hmm. do they, like, how do they do it? Do they like just start and read a page and stop after the page or do they stop like every paragraph and pause? Like, how do they do that? The way that uh, we typically do it is you just read audible, like out loud, right? And so until you I, like mess up, uh, yeah, usually, or I hear something or something like that. And so a lot of the times, um, you're you're playing with a lot of different factors when we're recording people. And so one might be, did you mess up the way a word is pronounced? Right? Did you? The word I always use as my example is banana, because like it's not that hard of a word to say, but some people might, you know, is it? Where's the inflection at? Like, did you inf put mm -hmm. weird inflection on and stuff? Um, so you've got that aspect. Then you also have the aspect of like, oh, you connected those words too close together when you were talking and it came out feeling jumbled. So you have to go back and do that again. And then there's like weird mouth noises that happen or like the microphone can pick up like their stomach and stuff too. And so all those reasons I might have to stop. And so for the most part, there's usually at least one stop for every page. Um, and are you reading along with them? Mm -hmm. when they're yep. doing it so you have yep. a copy of the book okay. yep so we both have ipads and so um i'll be reading along just to make sure that you know where we're at and everything makes sense and then what i have to do is i have to mark every time they make a mistake um the way that we typically do it is that like the recording is just going and so you know if we're doing a an eight hour session let's say there's going to be breaks and stuff so there'll probably be like six hours worth of actual recording being done mm -hmm. we're essentially just recording for six hours and so so you have I, like a flag like okay they messed up here yeah i gotta or cut it, it yeah it's not even for me to cut because most of the time other people are doing the editing we're just doing the recording and so i just have to say oh they made a mistake here and then i have to say like if we go back and have to do it a couple times because mm -hmm. that happens a fair amount i just have to mark however many times they did it so that when someone's looking back, they go, oh, yeah, look, I'm going to like separate the waveform right here because I know they made a mistake. Let me just keep listening. Oh, they, they did it once, twice. Oh, here's the third one. This is the one that needs to be used. Got it. Slide it over, that kind of thing. And so okay. interesting. Yeah, that's, that's usually how they do it. And so that's called like roll recording because we're just rolling and recording. Mm -hmm. I know that the because I looked at their website, the narrators that do the Schwab stuff, um, they do what's called punch recording. So every time they make a mistake, they stop, roll it back, let it play for a minute so that they can listen to the pacing that they were going in and then start recording when they need to record so that it all just kind of flows. Yeah, and it probably so, depends on like the talent of the audiobook narrators, like how long yeah. someone's been doing it because like they are Michael Kramer and um, Kate Redding. Kate Redding, and they've done a lot of audiobooks. So like maybe it's like better like they feel like they have more confidence in doing it that way versus like a newer audiobook narrator or like an author who's doing their own book or something like they're not yeah necessarily versed in it yeah it's a little bit harder just because you have to like the way they do it is you have to like keep the pacing the exact same and keep it consistent um yeah. and you have to like remember character voices and stuff like that too if they're yeah. character voices or whatever and so they are like super talented and it is much, yeah. it is a harder way to record, but it is an easier way to be produced because the editing yeah. time is so much smaller. I would also think maybe it comes out sounding nicer almost. Mm, I don't know. It might sound more consistent is maybe the yeah. way I would describe it where like, you're not going to notice like volume changes, pace changes or something like that. Um, but again, that comes down to talent and they're both super talented. And so, yeah. That's cool. I was I was curious about like mm -hmm. the process because like I haven't ever heard of it. And then like I was listening to Babel um, on audiobook, and I just noticed in the audiobook I was listening to it like there'd be times when all of a sudden he's like right here, and then next yeah. thing you know it's like way back here, and then it would come back to like normal. Yeah. And I was just like thinking about that because now you working in audio makes me think about those things of like yeah. what could have happened. Yeah, so usually what happens is the way it typically goes when we record is we'll do two or three days of recording to get the books done, and then we send it off for them to start editing. And so they'll go through and they'll edit, and there's usually things that are, like, missed 
or pronunciations that I was like, oh, that was fine. They're like, no, this isn't fine. Or they mm -hmm. just like want things kind of reworded. And so we have what we call a pickup session where they'll come back and they'll just redo those lines. And so yeah, those usually go pretty quick because it's like yeah. um, like five to 10 like mistakes were, that were in the entire book. Right. Go yeah. back and do those again because I'm like super diligent when we do it in the initial recordings. Imagine um, having to do a Sanderson one that's like 1,200 pages. I would love to. Because I'm sure your <laughs> books probably average around the 300 length. Yeah. Like, uh, not, you... nah, maybe like two to 300 probably. Yeah. Because you're doing, you tend to do a lot of like, um, like nonfiction. Yeah. They're more stuff. like memoir based. Yeah. Literature. Which tends to, I think tends to be shorter. Yeah. I would agree. Interesting. Yeah. And so a lot of the times the reason that you can hear those differences is that maybe they used a different microphone or they were at a different studio or something like that. There was one mm -hmm. um, when I was working with Penguin Random House, they had uh, the narrator was in to do one book. But since they had her in a studio, they said, hey, we like need her to do pickups for this other book that we're working on. Like while you're doing this project, we're also going to have you do these pickups or whatever. And I was like, oh, OK, Got sure. It. And so they were like, just try to get like as similar a sound as you can we know it's not going to mm -hmm. be perfect and so usually that's what those are is like oh yeah it was she recorded it in new york and then she came here and we recorded you know the two or three mistakes that she had to correct here yeah that kind of thing interesting so, yeah. cool you learn something new every day <laughs> that's my job <laughs> <laughs> well i i was talking about me i learn something new every day oh yeah that's yeah, that's how we do audiobooks and stuff. They're fun. The mm -hmm. actual like <clears throat> recording process for me is it can be straining just because I'm having to like listen so much to so many different things and read mm -hmm. along at the same time. But um, a lot of caffeine gets me through those mostly because I have to focus so much. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be hard. Yeah. To so focus are, for that long. Yeah, those are the days that I drink like three or four coffees in the day or I'll drink one in the morning. When you text drink... me, you're like, I'm buzzing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, like, oh, good. Kind of. I mean, the one day this last week that I was buzzing was because I went and visited our friend. I guess my friend Josh. And he gave me so much coffee to drink. Mm -hmm. And so then I was buzzing. And I had to apologize to everyone because I was like, I'm sorry, guys. I'm like vibrating in this room right now because I'm just so caffeinated. Well, it happens. <laughs> it does. Um, we have two minutes left on our timer. Oh I talked the entire time. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> I asked you the question. <laughs> I know. But I don't know. I'm my mom's son. I like to talk. Yeah, you do. You are a talker. Sometimes when you tell me, you're like, oh, sorry. Like, this person was talking. And I'm like, yeah, but like, it's also you because you talk a lot. Like anywhere we go, you talk to someone and I'm like ready to go after like a minute and you're like 10 minutes still talking. I'm like, we got to get out of here. <laughs> but also sure. like I'm the other end where I'm not very chatty with people I don't know. And like, yeah. unless I know you really well, like I'm usually pretty quiet. So like with this, I seem, I feel like I sound like i'm outgoing but like if i met you in person i'd probably not talk very much um, <laughs> i do a lot of talking I'm not, i get nervous yeah so like you do all the talking but then i'm usually like okay i've been uncomfortable for 10 minutes <laughs> go. i'm not so bad it's not like when i when we go to like the grocery store i'm not like all right we got to talk the life story with the you know clerk no. checking us out but you're also not the person like you're you're not someone who just goes up and like talks to someone and they clearly are uncomfortable and don't want to talk to you and you just like keep talking to them or something yeah. like you just like you just find people and you chat and then they're like having a good time and I'm like he's just making friends over here like that's the yeah. vibe is you're just always making friends you gotta you know and so you you're the person like who knows everybody and like gets us out of the house and, and <laughs> just like tagging along <laughs> That's kind of true. Yeah. I, I'll agree with that. But I also know like your mom's the same way. Like I could go out with your mom and she would just like chat up anybody. Yeah. You know, she could make friends with anybody. Yep. And she will. <laughs> yeah. Whether oh. she does um like sorry I cut you out when you with the thing going off. 
Yeah, I tried to pause it, but I didn't. Um, with her like work stuff because she does like a uh, insurance. Um, yeah, I hear, I've heard her talking on the phone, and I'm like, she's just making like a friend for life. Yeah, you know, she does. And then she's so <laughs> many people that she has so many people that she knows. She's like, oh yeah, I helped him on a claim once, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you just yeah. make friends with everybody, and you've inherited that trait. You can just like make friends with people really easily. Uh, that one goes all the way back to grandpa then, because grandpa would make friends with everybody. And so, yeah. Yeah. Nice to just have that personality. Yeah. It's just the gene passing its way down. Mm -hmm. It's a good one to have. I like it. It is. It's especially nice for me because I don't make friends very like quickly. Like I'm just very shy. So now I'm like, oh, I have all these friends, but it's like <laughs> you made them. I just, they just have to have me because I come along with you. <laughs> nah, they're your friends too. Okay. Okay. Sh shall well, we sprint? I think so. You seem to be itching to sprint. I like I said, I've been in a creative mood, and so I'm out here creating. I'm being okay. creative with the iPad now. I'm if I'm being honest, would I rather be playing a video game right now? Maybe, but you I can can't play a video game. I can't because uh, these are hooked up to the laptop, and so I can't hear the video games. And so, darn. I guess I could just play this audio off of the off of the monitor. Well, you don't have to for me be reading. I just <laughs> no one in the sprints has to be reading. If you want to be doing something else, this is not. We're not like only read. You know, I just feel like I'm being pulled in so many directions. I'm like work on the video game, but I want to read, but I want to play a video game, but I want to do D and D, and so it's like who yeah, gets you got to choose energy? one. Yeah, just like. Because that's the only way to get something done. But <laughs> the ADHD brain, though, is in full force today, it seems. Okay. I understand. Okay. Then let's go. Let's start, and I will see you at 30.
Hello. Welcome back. Hello. Welcome back to you. Thank you. Yeah. What were you doing? Uh, I decided to play Minecraft. That is the route that we went. And so I Just was. Play, did you listen to the book at all or? I was listening the whole time. Wow. Yeah. It was easier to play and listen than it was when I was trying to sit and think about making a video game. Because my brain was working as opposed to, hold on, I gotta lift this back up. As opposed to when I'm playing Minecraft, my brain isn't working. I'm just breaking yeah. blocks. Yeah. Well, that's but, good. I'm glad you enjoyed some video game time. Yeah. Still listen to two. your playlist, your cozy reading instrumental playlist. You were playing a video game listening to a playlist and listening uh -huh. to the book. Oh, I didn't. I can't hear the video game at all. Okay, but still, that's a lot of brain things happening. The music was just background. I was focused on the book. Okay. How far did you get? I, I got to page 50. Mm. So pretty decently into it. It's, um, it's interesting so far. Yeah. It's like humans don't have magic mm. and, um, everybody else kind of does and she is struggling because she can barely get her baking to sell because she doesn't have magic but then her friends who are orcs like secretly put her in this baking competition and she gets in and this guy like brings her the thing and it's like you're in and then she was like i'm not going and so then he's like if you sell out your stall then you'll go and she's like okay and then he stood there because he's an elf which is like the most revered and she um she sells out because he's there and everyone wants to buy from an elf. And so then he's like, so you're going to come? And now I'm at the part where she's like, okay, maybe I'll go. So I see. She's going to go in a baking competition. And I like her friends so far. They seem supportive. Good. And good. Um, that's good. Yeah. I hope your ending doesn't disappoint. That's with thrillers. That's hard because sometimes they can make or break the book. Like I feel like, Mm. For, for me like fantasy and stuff like I, endings aren't like as big of a deal you know um but i feel like with thrillers when like the twists come mm -hmm. if they're not good it kind of can like ruin a book because you're like really that's what like was going on the whole time there's like more um what's the word hinging on it or like yeah more of the plot like is the the twist like that's the point so yeah i understand yeah, doesn't that doesn't it sound cute? It's it's pretty cute so far. Pretty cozy. I like it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say like right away. I'm like the most blown away. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of writing, it's like pretty straightforward and feels a little bit like we're getting told a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But like I'm enjoying it, and I I don't really I don't have like complaints about it. There's nothing that I'm you know disliking. It's just not like immediately like oh my gosh new favorite right and i am enjoying it you know yeah yeah i had i think the more i get into it and like the more we might get to see friendships and stuff like that mm -hmm. i think the more i'll like it but i think this is going to be a romance so i don't know mm. like how much we'll get of friendships but it does say heartwarming friendships on here so that, that's what that, i'm here for at least sounds like friendships yeah yeah but I think romance is going to be like more the front facing of the plot. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like thrillers and mysteries are like the ones for me that I feel like maybe I judge more on like shock factor or like plot. Like I judge the plot more than I do in fantasy mm -hmm. In fantasy. I can just be more along for the ride if I love the characters and stuff, but I can, I think I, if I'm reading a mystery, like it's still characters first, but like I do think I pay more attention to the plot than I do in fantasy. Yeah. Well, I feel like thriller and mystery are more plot driven. Like they kind of have to be. Like, yeah. especially for a thriller, how can you make <laughs> character building into this like suspenseful or something? Yeah. I would say 
to me, like thrillers and mysteries don't have a lot of character development. Like you kind of yeah. just get the character as they are and you watch them make decisions Yeah. and whether they're good or bad decisions. But I wouldn't say you get like a completely different character from the start of the book to the end of the book. Yeah. Which, like you do in fantasy sometimes where they have a lot of character development. Yeah. Um, but it's like the, the mystery itself is what's like interesting about them. Right. Yeah. I would agree. Um, I didn't tell you, but when I brought my snack up here with my cashews and little nut clusters, Pippi all about it. Like, yeah, he was asleep on the tower was like, whoa, dad, I got to come check that out. And yeah. so he was up here. And so for half of that reading sprint, not this last one, but the one before it was just like Pippi right here, just like taking up desk space and me being like, OK, you cannot go past and get to my food. <laughs> And he was like, let me put my paw in, though, Dad. And then I was uh -huh. eating it. And he was like, let me just, like, taste it. And then he started licking my, the salt off the cashews. And I was like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> he loves, like, salty things. It's hilarious. Mm -hmm. We've got Kaladin, who will go after chicken, like, leave any kind of chicken out. He will be after it. He's obsessed with chicken. And then Pippi is, like, obsessed with salt and fish. Though yeah. I do think Kaladin probably goes after fish a little bit, too. Yeah. But, um pippy like wants like you bring out chips and he's like for me i feel like part of that too is just like in a bowl chips in a bowl specifically and he's like uh -huh. i gotta get in there no but sometimes if you have like the chip bag he tries to like yes. stick his head in the chip bag and you're like dude yeah. <laughs> you can't he definitely like it's not just the bowl definitely the bag and like salty snacks for sure are his dig but yeah half of that was just me like pippy stop <laughs> please so <laughs> Well, he also that. loves butter and he loves coffee. So mm -hmm. he's like he's like a dog. Oh, did you do you hear me talking about you? Was that Pips or Cal? Can you say hi? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. So I pick him up. He, he would have said hi. <laughs> oh, this is Aladdin. <laughs> yeah, he's leaving already oh yeah coffee um he likes the milk like foam like when i say coffee i mean like a latte he uh he likes the milk foam yeah so i make yeah. a coffee every or a latte every morning and so when i'm done making it he just wants to lick the the foam off the top mm -hmm. and so yeah but it's hilarious because i'm allergic to dairy so um you made me one with oat milk and he came up and he was like coffee time and then he spells it he's like what is this yeah it has to he be. only wants the real milk <laughs> yeah he wants the real milk foam he doesn't yeah, he's want like this is foam. garbage mm -hmm. <laughs> this is not the latte i signed up for also we had to like get him away because he, we had one with chocolate in it and he was like "Ooh!" And we're yeah. like, no mm -hmm. no 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 we cannot have <laughs> yeah but yeah he gets he gets very upset if he doesn't ask, have his coffee he like cries mm-hmm but he gets confused or like he doesn't want to come up. So sometimes you have to like bring it to him. And it's like, this is so extra. Yeah. <laughs> and, like Sometimes he doesn't even want it either. He'll like sniff it and he'll just be like, I'm good now. Thanks. And yeah. And he move buries on. it. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. okay, I'm going to, I'm going to drink it now. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. And then he waits and I have a bagel sometimes in the morning and we have to put like a glob of butter on the side because he waits there and he stares at me and watches me eat the entire bagel until I put down the plate and then he comes and he licks the butter off. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. want the crumbs, doesn't want, you know, the actual bagel itself. But yeah. I love animals too. They're yeah. just adorable. They They're got their best. quirks. They all have their personalities. That's the thing. Like every animal that I've had, like every pet, it's just like they have truly distinct personalities. Yeah. For sure. Kaladin is very much like our sassy one. He's like, I'm gonna get what I want. He like opens doors and he cries at you because he's like I need attention right now, so I'm going to get into everything and be stinky. Yeah. And Pippi is just like a lover. He just wants to cuddle and eat your food, apparently. <laughs> it definitely is the love bug of the two. I mean, Kaladin definitely will hang out on the bed, but he's not like, I want to snuggle. I mean, Pippi mm -hmm. was fine with me holding him. As I was eating, I was just holding him. He was like, yeah, this is fine. I can handle this. Yeah. You so. could kind of like not do whatever to Pippi, but like you can pick him up and like bring him around whatever he's like this is cool yeah kaladin's like i will be touched only when i please yeah and it's usually middle of the night he just comes up and like we call it yakking but he like goes like ah <laughs> in your face <laughs> he's like wake up cuddle me yeah <laughs> did he jump off the desk 
He did. He walked out. Hmm. He was here before the sprints, like sitting with me, but yeah. I think he was camera shy. He didn't want to be on camera. He's like, you guys are talking too much. I'm out of here. I'm trying to get my I mean, sleep he was, on. He's in the bedroom the last yeah. I saw him, so I'm sure that's where he is again. Yeah. But we do need to feed them soon. So Ooh, you're right. Did not realize how late it was. Well, I think I think that will be the last sprint just because I uh um I need to eat something and I haven't ate enough. Um and I don't know how I'll react to that. So I need to not do that on sprints. Um Yeah. I love animal sitting too. I uh I though when I animal sit for my parents, they got a zoo over there. They do have a zoo over <laughs> there. Because they have two cats and uh a dog. And then my sister has a dog who comes over a lot because they have a bigger yard and uh it's gets gets crazy over there. Yeah. Oh, thank you guys for joining. Thank you both. Yeah. And everybody else who joined. Here. It was really fun. I wanna I think we're gonna do my next one will be on the I think it's next weekend, right? Next Sunday. No, I, I I'm oh. not gonna do that. I okay. think it'll be February. It, it's gonna be a little later because we had to delay. So um usually it would have been last week and then the week after, but then your mom's gonna be here, so we're not gonna do it. Um okay. and then the fourth, I think it's going to be the eleventh and um, of February is when we're going to do the next one. And I think Karen from Roving Reader is going to join me. Oh, nice. I asked her, um, and she seemed like she wanted to, but we just got to make sure logistics work for everyone. Um, but I'm thinking this. I might. I usually do eleven a.m., but I, uh, we might push it back if she whatever works time. for her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll have another guest on, and I'm Maybe. excited because. It'll be the first time Karen and I do reading spritz together. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would have a small farm. <laughs> you absolutely would have a small farm. I would not. Um, I don't think I could, like, have a farm where, like, I'm, like, producing, like, animals to eat. Because right. I just That's could not. I couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, But I would definitely have, like, just a farm, like, rescue them, you know? Like... Mm -hmm anybody can join and we'd have goats we'd have llamas we'd have dogs we'd have cats bunnies oh my gosh have you seen those reels of bunnies eating like um like berries and stuff and they sure just little, them to me. oh my gosh and they have it all over their little faces it's the cutest <laughs> <I've ever seen. laughs> I, I love them it's just okay so yeah i would for sure have a farm the whole, cool. only hard part is that you would be then like having to take care of them <laughs> the most because like most days I can't do a lot. So uh, yeah, and be like, here's all the animals I want. Here you go out in the snow and. <laughs> oh my, that's a lot of chickens. Wow, chickens are fun too. I've heard per chickens have personalities. Also, horses. Horses like are a lot of work though. That's the one that I would be weary about just because. I've never like had horses, so I think it's just intimidating, you know. There's, horses are big too, and there's something intimidating about a big animal like that. Yeah, and they just require so much like care, mm -hmm. and I don't know if I could give that amount of care, you know. Um, but I I think it's so cool when people have horses and they have like such good bonds with their horses, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. Well, next live stream we'll have to have more animal talk. Okay find out more about the farm the farm life <laughs> yeah it's gonna convince me to have a farm life i'm gonna move <laughs> uh maybe next time we play sturdy valley instead and then we can have our farm life yeah that's true whenever we have the farms in there that's like my favorite part is just running around doing all the farm stuff yeah though i'm sure it's more fun in game than probably in real life like having to actually no. call all that <laughs> no early mornings no late nights no in the rain snow whatever no well yeah so thank you guys for joining thank you everyone for joining us and uh we're happy to be here we'll be back on like i said february 11th maybe sooner but that's like the next one i know for sure i have scheduled sounds good okay well, 
Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> I'm saying bye to you, but I'll see you oh. in a second. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> bye.